So you think better than expected this quarter? We don't have all of the bits of this quarter yet, do we, by any stretch? But what are the early signs? Yeah, hi. Anna. Well, it's, it's very early days, but I would say market was very nervous into this reporting season. Uh, we've seen a lot of de-risking uh, in some part of the market, cyclicals in particular. And yet, so far, the few numbers we got this week, about 10% of the market has reported in US and Europe. We are not that bad. We've seen stocks up uh, after numbers uh, in tech, in some of the cyclicals, in industrials in particular. So, you know, the, the companies which have reported so far tell us the world is not collapsing. Uh, activity is still growing, economy is still growing, and it's been a relief to the market so far, uh, even though the, the broader narrative is still very much about central banks, about inflation, about rates, but at least earnings seems to be coming as a bit of support to the market right now. Okay, so good so far. Jump in, Kaylee. Well, so good so far on the micro, but let's talk about that macro story you just alluded to, the idea that we potentially now have a European Central Bank that could hike rates in July. How would that influence the equity market? Well, I think the equity market um, has been constrained uh, for some time now by this repricing in, in the bond market. And to some extent, we've seen uh, equities holding up relatively well because the bond market is the one which has been hurt the most by this unwind of, of central bank support. And, and to some extent, the TINA mindset, the lack of alternative has been helping equities to hold so far. Uh, but I think in the environment of, of tighter policy and unwind of liquidity, earnings and fundamentals will prevail, right? So uh, it's very hard to say equities uh, are outperforming bonds for very long if earnings don't uh, support uh, equities anymore. And that's why so far the early reporting is important because earnings are still um, uh, supporting uh, equities. But uh, yeah, going forward, uh, you know, the unwind of liquidity uh, will challenge uh, investors and will force investors to focus much more on fundamentals. So you think, though, that stocks can continue to rally, can they? Can European or, or they can withstand higher yields, at least? Because, as you point out, stocks have maybe been quite resilient given what has been thrown at them from the bond markets. But some people have a nervousness around that and say uh, maybe stocks have been sort of using up some of that slack that there was in valuations and now there isn't any slack left to kind of absorb these higher yields. Well, we kind of agree with that. We don't have much upside left to our target. To be very clear, we don't see the market going up a lot from here. I think it's more about trying to use some of the dislocation we've seen within the market um, to, to adjust positioning. And, and even though the broader market has been fairly resilient, within the market, we've seen meaningful de-risking and some part of the market seem to price a fairly pessimistic outlook, which is yet to be confirmed, right? So ultimately, the uh, unwind of liquidity, the rebound in rates, will force investors to focus on fundamentals and to balance, you know, uh, the valuation and the earnings outlook. We don't want to be paying too much for stocks anymore in the backdrop of reducing liquidity. You want to be very mindful about how much you are paying for your uh, stocks, and you also want to make sure earnings will come as a support down the road, right? All right, so Emmanuel, with that in mind, where's good value? Well, we like, well, we see value in value. So we like some of the banks uh, which, you know, which uh, are not immune to macro risk, but which have been repressing significant uh, downside to the economy already, which still get the support from higher rates, which have strong balance sheet, which are relatively cheap and not over on anymore. We like some of the stocks in, in autos, which again, do price significant, um, you, know, uh, you know, weakness in, in the economy. But we also like some part of the defensive, like, utilities, for example, which, um, you know, can give us a bit of defensive uh, hedge in this environment. We like energy, which is still something we like on, on the back of this inflation hedging and, and the risk around Russia, Ukraine. So we want to have a fairly barbell allocation, but with a tilt to value, simply because we think valuation will be constrained by this repricing in interest rate and, and tighter liquidity. Mm, if you continue to want exposure to energy, then that sometimes takes you into UK assets. The UK story sounds quite interesting, though, at the moment, in terms of the monetary policy dilemma. How is all of that playing in, that uncertainty around, you know, how long can the Bank of England keep hiking if the UK economy is going to roll over? Certainly the uh, consumer sentiment data was pretty disappointing. Uh, we like the UK large cap because, first, they don't have too much to do with the UK economy. Mm. They are exporters, so they do care about the weaker currency. And the sector composition is still towards value and commodities, which we like. Now, the UK small cap, the FTSE 250, for example, is something we don't like simply because we are fairly nervous about the UK economy. And as you said, the BOE is facing a very tough challenge to you know, uh, unwind liquidity, to tighten policy, to fight inflation, 
when you have already some evidence of demand destruction and uh, pressure on, on, on the economy. So we don't want to have too much exposure to the domestic UK market. We prefer the exporters and reducing cable, the currency, might uh, continue to be pressured down the road. Okay, so you don't want exposure to the UK market. What about exposure to France? How is the case for French equities different under a Le Pen presidency or a Macron one? Well, I, I mean, clearly the, uh, the outcome of the election um, has been a, a source of, of risk for the market. I mean, in the last couple of days, we've seen polls moving more towards Macron again. We have about 10 points lead for Macron relative to Le Pen. Uh, now, we've been writing that a Le Pen win would be, a, would be a shock to the market, simply because it would introduce significant uncertainty for France, uh, for the EU, um, while the statu quo and the Macron victory uh, would probably you know, help um, you know, sentiment on Europe and might bring more uh, move towards fiscal integration, uh, mm. you know, EU integration, fiscal spending. So clearly, you know, if you have a, a very unexpected outcome on, on Sunday night, I would expect, you know, European equities, yeah. domestic sectors like financials to be down significantly. Okay. But we think it's a fairly low tail risk for now.